I'm DJ Premier, and I present to you, So What's Up? Okay, computer. Run it back. So what's up? We're back for another episode. And this one, again, we keep getting requests on Twitter, comments in IG, Facebook, you name it. There's always certain people that's like, hey, do this one, do this one. But keep in mind, a lot of the discs I'm still looking for because I have boxes and boxes and boxes of discs. And that's why we have to search and find. And sometimes that's what makes us go, ooh, that's a good one. Let's do that episode. This is a request of one of my favorites. I already said, you know, my Steve's was one of my favorites of all time. And that episode is already in the mix, episode 49. This episode, I just happened to run into checking my tweets. And a, a guy on Twitter named Aesthetic P had this request. Should I play the request first and then show you the disc? Because I just found the disc. Check the request. Yo, peace, peace. You already know who this is. So I'm sitting here listening to some fucking gangstar. You know what I'm saying? And I'm over here just like peeping one of my favorite tracks. And this video is actually going sent out to Primo. If anybody can tag Primo in this, man. Um, so he has this show called What's Up? So What's Up? And basically, he's going over the majority of the classic tracks that he did um, for him. For him, as far as Gangstar, he's done tracks. We we, we all know Primo's resume is, is fucking timeless and it's endless, right? So, but one song that I really, really would love to see him do is fucking Brainstorm, bro. Brainstorm is just off the chain. Like, I want to, first of all, I want to know where the inspiration came from for that particular song. And then where did those drums come from, bro? Those drums are sensational. Like, I, I, I find myself dancing to the track like every other day and I put it on. This shit still sounds like sounds like the shit just came out yesterday. But please, Primo, if you get back to me on that, if you could do an episode on on um, Brainstorm, that would be fucking epic. I appreciate it tons. One love. Peace. Now that you've seen that, we found the disc. Well, like we always do, huh? Brainstorm from the Gangstar album, Hard to Earn. 1994 is the release, but in 1993, we did have singles. Mass Appeal was in 93 before the album dropped, but when we were putting this album together, First of all, this is not during the internet, so you'd either read about it or hear about it from people that were just saying certain things about my production style. Right after the Daily Operation album in 1992, going into 1993, there was a lot of talk about two things. Premier always just uses jazz samples, because and technically I was during a lot of the phases of our career. But things like that make me like to show you that I'm not one dimensional, multi-dimensional. And with that, let me show you how far I can go into the stratosphere with giving you different sounds, but still giving you that knock. All right. So with this, I started getting into sounds that just sound like galactic and just space sounds and just things that are just left of center, but still the drums. I'm all about drums, everybody knows that. I'm all about my bass lines because those are my two exper expertise positions of my of what I do. Piano a little bit, you know, cause I took piano lessons as a kid. I just never really completed getting it down packed, but the piano is still my go-to to find certain things to start a vibe sometimes. But the bass and the drums is my go-to. When we do albums with Gangstar, I've said it before, Guru gives me a list, and that list describes the songs. A long way to go, one of our episodes was for Poetic Justice. It didn't make the soundtrack, but I said it should go on the album because it fit Fife, rest in peace, Fife of Tribe Called Quest. The intro said, now here's a funky introduction. I felt like it was the perfect 
thing to set the album off after our intro skit. The intro skit on that album is so dope in any way, because that's just our motto on how we wanted to get put on when it came to letting people know we wanted to be another part of this hip hop culture with our brand and our style. So when it came down to going the, the route of doing you know, other sounds that were not the norm of my jazz style sampling, a long way to go fit the whole beginning of setting off that album. Obviously, Mass Appeal is not a sound like that, but then when you hear the ding, 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 that's a little intergalactic too, with the way it's looping. So as I said, every album, there's a list, and every album has a record about the ladies. This album did not have any. It was just raw, stripped down, and very, very direct, more than just the rhyming, and beats and dope ass scratches. With this one right here, when he said, I wanna rhyme fast, that's what it said, brainstorm, I wanna rhyme fast, because in the 80s era, you had nothing but fast raps. Eric B and Rakim. So e -M -C -E -E, don't even try to be. When you come up to speak, don't even lie to me. You like to exaggerate, dream and imagine it. Then change the rhyme around that could aggravate. Big Daddy Kane, raw. 24 steps chilling, killing like a villain. The meaning of raw is ready and willing to do whatever is clever. Take a loss never, and the rhymes I bust coming off as a must. Cool G rap and DJ Polo. Boy, come on, get with this, cause you can't diss this. I'm burning your ass like syphilis. A fast brother, you're just a lover with a slow hand. A freeze of seeds at the frost, need a snowman. No man. So everybody during that era, going from the, even though we're from the late 80s going into the 90s, we were doing fast records too, like Got You and, uh, cause and effect and records like that. But as we continued to do more fast records, the tempo started to slow down into the 90s and people stopped doing it. But on this album, he said, yo, fast rap to show my skill. I was like, all right, then I'm gonna keep it real stripped down. I said, but one thing that definitely has come into my head on the creative side, I want you to still be rapping and I wanna be fading the song out as you're still rhyming and just bring the fader down bit by bit and you just keep going. We'll find a spot, just keep going. And that was uh, one of the most favorite parts of creating that record. But the drums on here had to be very, very aggressive. Up tempo and it just had to be driving where you just know you can't even stop. And since I was into the weird sounds, there was two sounds that you hear in there. One is it's almost like if something's going zing, I call it a zing. That's actually what I named it. I named my sounds based off of what it sounds like to me. So Sabine is going zing, 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 zing. I call it a zing. That's the name of the sample. Then there's a like galactic sound where it's going meow, 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 meow. Those two combined, I was like, that's really all we need with those drums. And the scratches gotta be really dope. I love scratching, man. It's just so much fun to do. And th this is from me learning and studying all the greats that were doing the same thing. And that's why scratching is such a dope instrument when it comes to turntablism on these records. There's some special things that went on with this record, but let me explain this first. The sounds on these discs that are contained in this little floppy disc are the sounds of what you hear when you hear it on our album, song, streaming, CD, vinyl, or cassette. It's all stored on here. Then it's put into a machine called the Akai S950 Sampler. That's like I call the weapon of choice to put it in there. Then we trigger these sounds that's on here through a drum machine, which was called the MPC60, the Roger Lynn version. MPC 60 or the MPC 62 also made by Akai. Man, I'm sweating, so that lets you know this is a hot one. Cause we're gonna take it even hotter. So let the sweat drip, it's all good. Anyway, <laughs> so from that point, it is then laid to two inch tape, reel to reels tape machines, not a digital uh, process yet. We weren't on Pro Tools yet. And like I said, the sweat keeps coming. The air conditioner's off so that you can hear me clearly. And uh, let's get to the next stage of this. 
It is then run through a thing called time code, which is it's also called SEMPTY. All of that is then regulated by a small little box called the Roland SBX80. That's what kept everything in time once you hit that play button on that tape machine to make all the equipment sync up together. Now, what's so special to this to me with this song is not only the way that we did it to put it on the album and how stripped down it is. The best part was when we went on tour in 1999 with Rage Against the Machine, the crowd there wasn't into Mass Appeal and, you know, Code of the Streets. Those songs weren't even working when it came to that mosh pit crowd. So we said, let's change our entire set to more aggressive records. There's a break in the show, which I got the footage right here to show you. When we want to get to the next record before Militia, we go into a part where I tell the crowd, if you really want to get your aggression out right now, when I drop this beat, I want y'all to wild out. And as soon as I said that, and I said, ready, here we go. When I drop this record right here, I want everybody, everybody over there, over there, up there, up there, and on the floor to wild out. Y'all ready? Let's go. I get goosebumps just even watching that anytime I see that footage. And that was in Rennes, France. So shout to France. Always big Gangstar fans. And you see that crowd and hear that energy. That's what that's all about. <clears throat> so I think it's about time to just do the studio version of this. It's time to load this up into the S950. Trigger it with the MPC-60 drum machine or the MPC-62 Roger Lynn drum machine. And when you trigger it all with the play button that syncs up with the Roland SBX80 box and all of the MIDI cables are in sync together, you get this. And when you fake your break, when suckers choose, they lose, I'm like lethal. To you and your people, it's like an outrage. When punks step on stage with a weak show, weak flow, and still make dough. So I'ma take dough from them and then sun them. Teach them how to really get biz like this. Me and my gang's gonna swarm, swarm, brainstorm. Get, 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 get on it. Get, get up, uh, get, get up, uh, get, get, get on it. Get on it, get on it, get on it. Get on it, get it on takes it. at least two to tangle, so you could get strangled from any angle. Cause I get buck on ducks. All the sexy girlies wanna push up close to the man. So there you have it, it's just a combination of just, just structure of letting the rhymes have a space to breathe and still giving you the beat that you just can't even deny where we're coming from when we pound that beat out. And I haven't sweated in any of these episodes, but this one was worth the sweat. It's a workout, and y'all already know. That's what's up. One, two, check, I get down and dirty and my sounds are worthy of respect. So I'ma flex my text, it's like a major takeover, jumps past the mic over. Growing more and more nervous when I serve this ass whooping. Coming straight out of Brooklyn, boy.